The Hawaii Undersea Military Munitions Assessment, or HUMA, was mounted to locate chemical weapons agents dumped outside of Pearl Harbor in the decades following World War II. Researcher Margot Edwards describes the search for a chemical needle in a 500-meter-deep haystack. So the project started in 2007 and it lasted through uh, 2009. It was about a $3 million project uh, funded by the Army for us to try and both see what the effects of the ocean are on the munitions, but also the munitions on the ocean. We're looking for things that are, you know, one to two meters in their maximum diameter, so it's pretty hard to find. During those days, there was no GPS, right? There was not the um, kind of precision ship positioning that we have these days. The Army went to the National Archives to look for both letters and photographs of the disposals that had happened around Hawaii. Um, they had letters that sort of described the operation very basically, and then uh, photographs of people actually conducting the operation. The next step was to go to the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory, who have been conducting uh, dives off of, off of Oahu for a long time. And they also have a huge video archive. And they reviewed that video archive to look for things that look like munitions. And they gave us a, a geographic information system that had the locations of those munitions. And we were able to use that to help further refine where we were going to conduct the survey. The most important tool in our arsenal is a sonar system that we run here out of the University of Hawaii, the Hawaii Mapping Research Group. It's called the EMI-120, and it uses sound waves to basically, it sends sound waves down to the seafloor, and when they echo back, it's able to tell how far away the seafloor is, but it's also able to tell if the seafloor is reflective. So you can imagine that mud is not going to be reflective, but a piece of metal is going to be very reflective. What we found were these these trails of dots, these trails of very reflective dots um, that we started to suspect would have been the disposed munitions. A ship is most comfortable when it's heading into the seas, got a following sea behind it, right? And so you're going to head into the seas and be pushing the munitions off the side. So we did a very comprehensive survey with the sonar, 100%, more than 100% coverage, back and forth. We call it mowing the lawn, back and forth, back and forth, to get really good sonar coverage of these trails and put it right where we wanted to go. Then we went to the Hawaii Undersea Research Lab. So the Hawaii Undersea Research Lab operates the Pisces 4 and 5 submersibles, as well as a remotely operated vehicle, basically a little robot that you can go run around the seafloor. With those three tools, we were able to actually physically just get right up to within inches of ammunition. We found lots of munitions. We did video reconnaissance of many of the trails, and uh, I've counted over 2,000 individual munitions to date. And then we did sampling at um, approximately 20 of the munitions to see if we could find out if they were leaking. So we took a, a basically a milk crate, if you will, full of, full of uh, samplers that were designed to collect both sediment and water. And we didn't want to get too close to the munitions, so we sampled about a meter away. Um, we would dig, scoop up the sediment, we would capture the water right there a meter away from the munitions, and then we brought them back to the laboratory to analyze them for munitions, uh, constituents, also for things like arsenic and lead. The Army sent out a special hazmat group, uh, Edgewood Chemical and Biological Center, and their job was to make sure that every time the submersibles came back up onto the deck, no chemical agents basically were brought up with. There was a surprising amount of sea life down there, a lot of animals, but we saw a lot of sea stars, a lot of shrimp, especially a lot of shrimp around the munitions. There weren't a whole lot of the kinds of things that we think about eating down there, which actually was reassuring. So after we finished the water and sediment sampling, we went out separately and collected shrimp, uh, ebi, and onaga in the field area and had those uh, samples analyzed for the same sorts of things we were looking for in the sediment, different kinds of metals, arsenic, lead, copper, and then uh, munitions constituents, including chemical agent. Right now, nothing was indicated in Hama that looked like it was a hazard to the environment.
but again with these munitions continuing to deteriorate, right now mostly what I saw was intact. That's not going to last forever. And we never found the 16,000 munitions that we were really trying to look for, which were the ones that we thought would have chemical agents. Well, I think the, the biggest result is that we, we need to keep looking. We, we've definitely found munitions, and I think the University of Hawaii can take pride in the fact that we've developed an approach that's never been used before and turned out to be very effective. The search goes on.